What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today I want to talk about using Gecko Trading Bot and running backtests via command line. So why run Gecko backtests via command line? One of the key feature the command line interface CLI offers is the ability to run a strategy without warm-up by using historical data that was previously downloaded. This can save hours to days depending on your candle size. So if you're using one minute candles, it's probably going to be a few hours, not that big a deal. For me personally, I'm using five minute candles, so it takes me about a little over a day, depending on, again, your strategy. Some strategy requires a longer warm up time. So let's say your strategy requires a simple moving average of the last 1,000 candles. So if you need that and the five minute candle, we're talking about like at least several days. So, but if you have a 15 minute candle size, that's going to take like close to a week. So that's why I'm making this video today to talk about how to run Gecko using command line because who wants to wait a whole entire week before they can actually trade using Gecko? So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do the back testing in command line. And then the next two videos, I'll cover how to import and how to do paper trading and live trading using the command line interface. All right, the basics of using the command line interface, and you can really get this information from here as well. So this is from the Gecko site about the command line. They tell you the basics of how to set it up, how to run it in live mode, backtest mode, and import. So this really is just, you know, make a copy of the sample-config.js. So as soon as you download or you get clone Gecko, you get a sample-config.js file. So this file is really not used in the UI, but it's necessary, it's crucial for the command line interface. So you need to make a copy of it name as config.js or whatever you want to, but if you name it whatever you want to, you want to make sure that when you're calling in the command line, you can call your file, not config.js. The second thing is you want to modify the config file to run get go in import mode, live mode, or backtest mode. So the live mode consists of trading bot or, or paper trader. So let's say that you just want to test your strategy in the paper trader mode, meaning it's like testing the live trade coming in. I'll probably be doing that as well in the next few videos, just because in command line mode, there are a couple other things you can do, like getting email notification, getting Twitter notifications, Telegram notifications, all sorts of notifications. And you probably want to make sure that those work properly first before actually using it as a trading bot. So what you want to do is run it in paper trader mode, which is basically the same as the trading bot mode, except that it's not trading real money. But all these three modes, the import mode, the backtest mode, and the live mode, have to be configured separately. So technically, if you want to, you can have three separate config files. That's one way to do it. So let's say you want to name one config live.js or live config.js or another one called import config.js and a third one backtest config.js. However you want to do it so that you can have three separate config files, that's one way to do it. Or right now in this case, I'm just going to show you in a basic config file because that's how I've been doing it. After you set up the config file, the third thing is to run getgo and specify the config file. So you have to add additional CLI parameters for backtest and import modes. So as they show here, for backtest, you have to add dash dash backtest. For import, you have to add, you have to add dash dash import. So that's the basics of it. Now one thing before I go further in to talk about the config file is I definitely recommend using Visual Studio Code as free with JavaScript extension to properly highlight the code and brackets. Because imagine trying to read a config file, this is a config.js file, without all these highlighting. You can't tell where the brackets are, you can't tell which brackets line up to what. So in this case, I highlight, I can click on this and I know this bracket matches this bracket. And you can see the line as well. You can, you can close them up. So you can clean up the code a little bit to see what you're exactly looking at. It's very, very valuable to see that and be able to see if there's a certain bug in the code, for example, if you're missing a semicolon somewhere or if certain things are not set up properly, you see it pretty much right away. All right, here are the basic things you have to do to set up Gecko Trading Bot for backtest mode. So first thing you want to do is add the JSON version of the TOML parameters to the JSON.js file. So as I covered many times in the past, a strategy has a has a JavaScript file for the actual strategy itself, and also the TOML file. The TOML file, again, is what you see in the UI version of Gecko, all the different parameters you can change so that you can configure your strategy for a particular trade pair that you're using. Unfortunately, the 
command line interface does not read the TLML file, doesn't even care for it, doesn't even know where it is. So what you have to do is basically convert all this right here, in this case the RSI bull bear ADX strategy, you need to convert all of this right here into JSON. So the best way to do that is to use something like this, the online TOML to JSON converter. So all I have to do here is control A to copy it all, command C to copy it on, on the Mac. So command C and then after that I'm just going to command V it and then this will paste everything in here and let's click on convert TOML to JSON. And that's all it does. So it converts everything here and now we can copy and paste all of this into my config.js file. I'm going to go back into the config.js file. So I already set up my config file. I tested everything, make sure it works properly before I made this video. But what you really have to do here is, first of all, you want to make sure that the enable is true for the trading advisor. So you may make sure this is true. And the second thing is right underneath it. So you have all these different strategies here. You have the DEMA, the MACD, the PPO. You just need to add the strategy that you're using that JSON, not so much a file, but JSON code into here. And I did it and I did that exactly right over here. So I did that, I pasted it right into here. But one thing you have to do is let's add config.rsi bull bear adx. So this is the name of the strategy you're using. Whatever strategy you're using, make sure that you just copy the name over. One thing I do notice is that it doesn't like dashes. So if you have a strategy that uses a dash, not underscore, so something like this it will not work. So you would need to rename that strategy from a dash to underscore for this to recognize and read it properly. Again, the first thing you do here after you paste that JSON code in here is to add this config.rsi bobear, whatever the name of your strategy is, equal. This will let Gecko know that this is the JSON code for your particular strategy. So once you do that, the next thing you do is add a semicolon at the end. So make sure to add a semicolon at the end you probably see there'll be some sort of error if you don't have a semicolon because again you're using Visual Studio Code it'll tell you these little errors if you're missing those things so that's why you have to add a semicolon at the end of this section here and the third thing is if you go back to the TOML you notice that after the conversion it added all these quotes around every name of the parameters so it added every one of these little quotes right here you need to go in and remove them so once you did that, you should be all set in this section here. So again, so add a JSON version of TOML parameters to the config.js file, add name for the JSON version, and remove all the quotes around parameters name, add semicolon at the end, and then change trading advisor to use the correct strategy. So yes, let's go back up here. So in here, again, I already configured it. So originally, the method for me is that's MACD. I think for the config file, when you download it from the Gecko repo, it will probably, it, I think it uses MACD. So you need to change that from MACD to whatever strategy you're using. So once that's done, you also have to set paper trader to true because you're back testing. So you want it to actually record all these uh, information into the paper trader. So the paper trader, I think, believe is somewhere down here, right here. So configure.papertrader. So enable equal true. So make sure that's set to true. I think default to false. So the last thing is you want to set the date range for your back test. And the date range is actually all the way at the bottom right here. So if you go to configuring back testing, you have the date range section. You want to set it to whatever date range you want. You probably want to start with a very small range at first. Just want to make sure that everything works properly. And then you could do a larger date range of back tests. Again, this is really for people that haven't installed the back the Gecko back test tool. Because I really like that tool over testing one at a time. You could, you could basically batch back tests. So that's why I, I prefer that tool over this. But then this really just shows you how to run Gecko in command line and how it works. So the understanding of the config file. So in here you set the date range and then you want to set the batch size. So default is 50. And here's the note about the batch size. So the batch size is how many candles should Gecko process at each batch depending on what you're running Gecko on. So for example, you're running on a Raspberry Pi, you probably want to leave it at 50 just because it doesn't have that much memory. But like based on testing, and I was reading through this particular thread right here, if you read through this entire thread from Tommy Hansen, and he actually talked to the creator, X Mike, so about the Gecko performance, 
and he ran through a whole entire series of back tests. You can see it all right here on I mean, He timed it out, and he figured out that approximately a thousand is optimal for computers. But if you go above it, like two thousand to like a million, it actually doesn't increase your performance. It actually decreases it slightly. Not sure why at this point, but that's why for me anyway, I have it set to a thousand right now. So that would help in terms of the speed of the back test. So that's basically it. So once you have that all set up in the config file, you can save it or auto-save. Again, one of the nice little features in Visual Studio Code is you can have it auto-save and you don't even have to save it. It saves it for you automatically and you can just run the command line. So you open up terminal and you do something like this. Node, get go, dash dash, config, config.js or whatever config file you're using for backtesting, dash dash backtest and it'll start running it. You notice in here, for me, I'm not sure the font's a little too small, but I have some errors in here with the indicator. This is what happens when you have too many things loaded in. It doesn't affect how Gecko works because I'm not using that particular indicator that I failed to load, so it's fine. It's just informing you, letting you know that there's some indicators you have in Gecko that you installed that are not working. It doesn't really affect this particular backtest. And once it finished running the backtest, you'll see it. It actually tells you how much you know profit it made, how much it... um. The time span, again, I made a really short back test of four days. And it'll tell you the starting price, ending price, pretty much all the same information that you got from the UI. Again, I, you know, this is just to really confirm for you that the back testing is working properly so that you can then go ahead and um, look into using the Gecko command line interface for other things like importing and live trading. But in this case, this confirmed for me that this particular back test worked properly and I have configured the um, config.js file properly. And that's basically it. Again, I, this back test did not turn out that well in terms of the back test result itself because my particular settings made it so that I earned, actually I earned less, as you can see here. So the market made 13%, but I think I only made like 3 point something percent. So I'm behind the market by like 10%. So in this particular parameter settings that I have set up. It's not, it didn't do too well, but again, it depends on the different parameters you use. If you want to change your parameters, you can do that in your particular, in the JSON file right here. So you can change your parameters like you have done in the TOML file. So you just change in here, save it, and you are good to go with another back test. So that's my video for today, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions regarding how to set up the Gecko Trading Bot for back testing and command line. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified um, when I post the next video, hit the bell icon for post notifications. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.